This is Mason Greenwood scoring a free kick with his left foot. Here's another video of Mason Greenwood scoring a different free kick with his right foot. Everyone has a strong foot and a weak foot, right? So what footed is Greenwood? Greenwood interestingly said in an interview years ago that he's actually left footed, but just a few weeks ago for Hitafe, he took a penalty with his right foot. Anybody who takes a penalty with their weak foot is a madman. But clearly, Mason Greenwood has no weak foot. And that's one of many reasons the GOAT of manager Sir Alex Ferguson said this about him. Mason Greenwood, with my, in my opinion, is going to be a top player. He's, uh, he's got the, the coolness and coldness of a great striker. Mason Greenwood was arguably the best young player in world football. He was a teenager scoring goals for one of the world's biggest clubs. He was destined to achieve big things in the sport. And then... He threw it all away. Greenwood became the most hated player in world football. He faced serious charges that could have ended his career. He disappeared for almost two years, but now he's back on the pitch reminding everyone how good he is at football. And don't think his career is over because he's been linked with moves to some of the biggest clubs in the world. This is the rise, fall and return of Mason Greenwood. It all started in 2007 when a six-year-old Mason Greenwood signed with Manchester United. From day one, he was a special talent and stood out in an academy full of special talents. Greenwood played years beyond his age, he was the top scorer at every level, and at 15 years old, he was playing for the under-18s, and after scoring 17 goals in 21 matches, he finished top scorer in the under-18 Premier League, and he was player of the tournament when they won the cup. Word gets around quickly and everyone at United knew they had a prodigy coming up through the ranks. In summer 2018, manager Jose Mourinho invited Greenwood to travel with the first team for pre-season. But his professional debut came several months later, at the highest level of European football, playing against PSG in the Champions League. Greenwood went from playing against youngsters to some of the best players in the world overnight. PSG had Mbappe, Cavani, Neymar, Thiago Silva. And who did United have? 17 year old Mason Greenwood and fellow academy golden boy Marcus Rashford who sent the Red Devils to the quarterfinals with this iconic goal. Just four days later Greenwood played again, this time against Arsenal in the Premier League. He finished his debut season with four appearances in all competitions. This year was an experience for Greenwood. The next year was his breakout year. Oh, and that first professional goal you were waiting on? Here it is right here. This goal made Greenwood United's youngest ever goal scorer in European competitions. He scored again against Partizan Belgrade, scored another two against AZ Alkmaar, taking his goal tally to four in the group stages, all while helping his team top the group and qualify for the next round. As worth adding, he became Man United's youngest teenager to score in a European competition. But what about the Premier League? Let's watch his first league goal. I want you to remember that this season, Man United had no striker. Romelu Lukaku had left for Inter Milan that summer. They were so desperate for a number 9 that they brought in Egalo on loan. Another one of many short term solutions that didn't score many goals. Fans of the club were begging to give the youngster more playing time and they were proven right very quickly. Greenwood had a fantastic first season, he scored 17 goals in 49 games in all competitions and he ended the season even stronger than he started it. The 2019-20 season was one of one, the entire world shut down, sports were stopped and the next 18 months of football were played in empty stadiums. During this time period, Manchester United enjoyed one of their best spells of the decade and I know that's not saying much. The front three of Rashford, Martial and Greenwood with Bruno sitting in behind as a number 10 made every United game box office and Mason Greenwood was a big reason why they were so exciting to watch. He scored 5 goals in 9 Premier League games after the restart. Four of those came in three matches. He became one of the youngest players to ever score in three consecutive Premier League games. Mason Greenwood was exceeding expectations. He was 18 years old, already starting for one of England's biggest clubs, and after just one full season, he was given the iconic number 11 jersey once worn by Ryan Giggs. Things just kept getting better. Shortly after, Greenwood was called up to the English national team and made his England senior debut in a 1-0 win against Iceland, September 5th, 2020. Now that international trip became unforgettable for all the wrong reasons. 
At the height of the pandemic, September 7th, 2020, Mason was one of two England players that got caught sneaking girls into the team's hotel after these videos leaked on social media. It was a standard case, two young lads last night abroad, bored in their hotel room, on a two-man mission, trying to get lucky with a girl and a friend. Don't lie, you watching, you've been there. The two players had allegedly paid off the hotel receptionists, both players apparently had girlfriends at the time, it was a terrible look, caused all kind of outrage back home in England, the two players were fined £1300 by local police, I'm sure that really hurt their pockets, and then they were sent home early from international duty. Like anything in life, people were mad for a bit, and pretty quickly stopped caring and moved on to the next thing. Greenwood was back playing for United the same month, and despite scoring his first ever goal in the Champions League with his first ever shot against Leipzig, Greenwood had no luck in front of goal. He didn't score his first Premier League goal until December 5th in a 3-1 win against West Ham. But that's not all. He played the full 90 minutes in United's 9-0 win over Southampton, and he didn't score. He then went another four months without scoring a Premier League goal, ending the drought with the winner against Brighton. This goal changed everything, and all of a sudden Greenwood was scoring for fun. He scored five goals in April, four from four Premier League games. The fifth came in the semi-final of the Europa League against Roma. Greenwood finished the season strong, he scored 6 goals in the final 8 Premier League matches, and this run of form helped secure a 2nd place finish for United, which was an improvement from the previous season. Greenwood also started and played 100 minutes in the Europa League final, in which United lost in one of the craziest penalty shootouts in football history. Yes, that's David De Gea stepping up from 12 yards. Overall, it was a disappointing yet promising season for Mason Greenwood. He scored 12 goals and had 6 assists in 52 matches. Though despite his late run of form, he was not picked in Southgate's 23-man England squad for Euro 2020. And that's because England squads are always tough to make. They are spoiled for choice, especially with attacking options, and top players are snubbed every year. Let's be real, the controversy from earlier in the year definitely didn't help Greenwood's case seeing as he was never called up again after that incident. Nonetheless, Greenwood is one of the best young players in the world, would have plenty of opportunities to star for England at international tournaments. Well, that's what we all thought. In the 2021-22 season, football was well and truly back. Fans were back in the stands and Man United had a buzz about them that was just different. Not only had they signed Jadon Sancho and Rafael Varane, but they also brought back Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't even need to explain how big that transfer was. But signing two superstar attackers didn't stop Greenwood. He picked up exactly where he left off, scoring in the opening game against Leeds, and then again and again. He became only the second teenager in Premier League history to score in all of a team's opening three games. Greenwood turned 20 in October 2021, and with 32 club goals, only Norman Whiteside and George Best had more goals for the club as a teenager. His performances for the year of 2021 were recognised by France Football, the same company that awards the Ballon d'Or. Greenwood was one of 10 players nominated for the Coppa Award, given to football's best young player. He finished 5th behind these stars. For the first half of the 2021-22 season, Greenwood was one of the bright sparks in what was a disappointing United team. His 2021 was good, and his 2022 was looking even better. He had 5 Premier League goals, was on pace to reach double figures, but little did he know when he scored this goal against Brentford in the Premier League, it would possibly be the last goal he ever scores in English football. Because after this, everything changed. January 2022, Mason Greenwood lost everything. Disturbing videos were leaked on social media allegedly involving him and his girlfriend. There were also photos that I can't show in here for obvious reasons. I'm guessing you've all seen them. Not too long after these images released, Man United quickly announced that Greenwood would be suspended indefinitely. And Greenwood was then arrested by Manchester police on suspicion of rape and assault. It took a while, but October 2022, Mason Greenwood was officially charged with attempted rape and several other domestic abuse charges. As a result, he was removed from EA Sports FIFA games, he lost his sponsorship with Nike, the boy who had the world at his feet had literally just lost it all overnight. And a lot of people thought Greenwood would go to jail and never play football again. However, the situation turned very weird very quick. 
As a shock to many, March 2023, all charges were dropped against Mason Greenwood. Every single one. Making him, in the eye of the law, an innocent man. Not because he was proven innocent, but because he was never proven guilty. And by default, until proven guilty, you are innocent. Mason Greenwood wasn't proven to be either, so what does that make him? But what makes things even weirder is that Mason Greenwood and Harriet Robson, the alleged victim in this case, have since had a child together. When you do the math, you can quickly calculate that their baby was conceived well after Greenwood was charged. She remains his girlfriend, the two are meant to be getting married, and she still publicly supports him as if nothing ever happened. All of this made everything very complicated. Manchester United found themselves in a position where they had a player on their books who was legally an innocent man, but guilty in the court of public opinion. If Mason Greenwood was a nobody, they would have released him the day the allegations surfaced. They didn't do that. Why? Because he's a very good footballer, and above all, an asset that was worth around £100 million in the transfer market before any of this happened. If guys like Mudrick and Anthony are worth £80-90 million, then what would Mason Greenwood be worth? Let's be honest, if Man United wanted rid of Greenwood because of what we all saw on social media, they would have released him January 30th 2020. The only reason you wait 18 months is because you're considering bringing him back. Why else would you drag it on that long? I think those in high positions at the club were hoping that after the charges were dropped, that the public stance would soften. They used every PR trick in the book, hinting at a possible return on socials, leaking stories to the press, trying to get an idea of what kind of response to expect from the public if he did come back. They waited as long as they possibly could, and I think at the last minute, they planned to bring him back and bottled it. The club was under a lot of scrutiny for the Super League, the Glazers, the poor performances on the pitch, and I think they ultimately decided that bringing Greenwood back would be another headache and potentially very damaging to the club's brand and image. And that's why August 16th 2023, it was announced that Greenwood and the club had mutually agreed he would no longer continue at United. Interestingly enough, he is still under contract. Are Man United hoping to get a transfer fee? Or is there still some hope that after a year of professional football, they might be able to bring him back next year? According to Fabrizio Romano, Man United have still not made a final decision about Greenwood's future, and the club have said that they will evaluate his situation at the end of the season. But it's been two years now. I don't believe they haven't decided what they want to do with Greenwood. It's pretty simple. Either they want to bring him back, or they want a big transfer fee. Who knows what Man United and the Glazers in Tampa are thinking. What we do know is Mason Greenwood's football career is far from over. Believe it or not, despite everything that was going on, lots of clubs were still interested in signing him. And on September 1st, 2020, it was announced that Mason Greenwood was headed to Spain to play for Hetafe in La Liga on loan. And everyone was shocked to see Hetafe fans welcome Mason Greenwood like this. Extra, extra, extra extraordinario. Hola, ¿qué tal? Now before you judge these Hetafe fans, you have to remember the language barrier. Most of them will not speak English, they have not heard what you've heard in those videos. The Hetafe president made his stance very clear when he said, quote, We do not want to enter the investigation, this guy has been declared innocent, judged, he is innocent like you or me. The moment we see that he is innocent, we have no more to say. Regardless of the circumstances, this was the biggest signing in club history. By the way, their Twitter admin went crazy. And it's very clear the only thing that Hetafe president cares about is what Mason Greenwood does on the pitch. And on the pitch, for a young player in a new league who's been out of action for 18 months, Mason Greenwood looks very good. He made his debut against Osasuna in La Liga, coming off the bench. His first start was against Spain's third most successful club, Athletic Bilbao. In his first 90 minutes, Greenwood provided an assist, and a little over a week after, against Celta Vigo, Greenwood scored his first goal in professional football since January 2022. In the month of November, Greenwood hit form. He scored twice in the Copa del Rey, one of which was a really nice goal. In La Liga, he had two assists in two games against Granada and Cadiz. His best game, however, came against Sevilla. He scored a goal and produced a lovely assist. Did you notice that he took that penalty with his right foot? 
but took the free kick with his left. As a football fan, you have to admit, he's a unique talent. And if you doubt that, you should watch his highlights from the Atletico Madrid game. Performances like that is why you're starting to hear all these transfer rumours. And the clubs he's linked with are not small clubs. Real Madrid, Barcelona and Juventus are all teams reportedly interested in signing Mason Greenwood. It's been said in the press that Barcelona would be willing to give him the number 10 shirt and make him quote, the heir to Messi. I don't know how true that is, but that's word on the street. But just because he's playing some great football doesn't mean life has been perfect for Greenwood in Madrid. Because just as he started to play great football again, he was sent off for this career ending challenge. Watch this. I want you to comment down below if you have any idea why that was a red card. It was a terrible decision and rightfully overturned by La Liga. But that's not the only controversy. Greenwood was in the news again after the Madrid derby when fellow Englishman Jude Bellingham allegedly said this to him. This was all over social media and Hitafi reported the incident to La Liga asking for further investigation. It all died down though when Mason Greenwood apparently asked the club not to investigate any further because he didn't want to make a fuss out of the situation. Smart PR move for Greenwood. Bellingham getting suspended would only draw more attention to what Greenwood wants everyone to forget about. The smartest thing for him is to keep people talking about the football. And that'll happen if he keeps playing like he's playing. He went and scored another great goal against Granada. He scored again against Betis. Greenwood is starting to find the net again, which is scary for La Liga clubs. Greenwood is in fine form. He has 3 goals and an assist in his last 7 games. He's got 8 goals and 5 assists in 25 games for Hitafe this season. He's averaging a goal contribution every 2 matches. So here we are up to present day and everyone wants to know what happens next. Let's assume Mason continues to revive his career playing well at Hitafe. Cause let's be real, he's too good for them and clearly still has the potential to go to the very top in terms of what he can do with a football on the pitch. The question is, will he get the opportunity? Will big clubs be willing to sign him? To that, I don't know. What I do know is his career will never be the same. Yes, he's been given a second chance, but the opportunities he once had will never come back. He can forget brand deals and sponsorships, and he'll definitely never play for England ever again. I think his best chance of international football is with the Jamaican national team who are reportedly okay with him changing and representing them. As for the Premier League, I find that hard to see also. Maybe in the distant future? But then again, which English team is going to have the balls to sign Mason Greenwood? If not United, then who? That being said, in terms of anywhere else where in Europe, he can go on to do a lot of things. I think the old career that he had as the United Golden Boy in English International, that's over with. I think best case scenario for Mason now is trying to become one of the greatest British players to ever play in foreign leagues. He could spend his years in La Liga, Italy, countries like that and go on to be an all time great there. It's not the career he wanted, but too bad. It's nobody's fault but his own that he's in this position. Will Mason Greenwood get another chance at the top of football? Can he ever play for England in the Premier League again? Or do you agree with me? If you've made it up to this point and enjoyed, you should subscribe to the channel and check out other videos we've made on young footballers. That's all I gotta say, it's DKM signing out, until next time, and peace.